If you're looking for a camera to start making some content, whether it be vlogs, travel videos, or anything on the go, you have to consider a couple of factors. Weight, portability, the image quality, and the overall versatility of the camera. If someone asked me for a recommendation, I would have said that the best camera that you can use is the one that you already own and carry with you, implying that your smartphone is probably good enough to do everything that you need it to do. But that all changed when I saw this. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, and in my opinion, this is the best camera that you can buy if you're an on-the-go content creator like a vlogger. Whether you're a beginner or a professional, the Osmo Pocket 3 has a lot of cool features that make this camera unique and rise above a lot of the competition from the likes of Sony or Canon. I've been using the Pocket 3 for the last couple of weeks now, and I paid just over $700 for the Creator Combo. I'll break down the differences between the $500 Pocket 3 and the Creator Combo in just a second, but I do want to tell you a little bit more about this little camera because it's so fascinating. Just a quick disclaimer, all of the footage that you're going to see from the Pocket 3 has been shot in the auto mode, and I did that so that you can see what the image quality is going to look like straight out of the box if you're someone who's never messed with a camera before. However, if I'm showing examples from other formats or the log mode, I will make sure that I put a lower third just below the image so that you're actually able to tell between the two. So first things first, this is a brand new action slash lifestyle slash vlog camera from DJI. It's got a 1 inch CMOS sensor with a 20 millimeter focal length and an f2.0 aperture. Yes, this little camera sitting inside of this gimbal has a larger sensor than your iPhone and has the same size sensor as something like the Sony ZV-1. It's capable of shooting 4K video in 60 frames per second, has an ISO range of 50 to 6400 in the standard video mode, and it does surprisingly well in low light. It also has the ability to shoot portrait content for social media. Of course, it also has a 3-axis gimbal that handles run-and-gun footage without a problem, and has a 2-inch touchscreen that is surprisingly visible during sunny days. That touchscreen is used to control the entire camera, besides, of course, the record button, which is located front and center, and the joystick, which handles the zoom and the gimbal control. It also does support SD cards up to 512 gigabytes to get a lot of record time out of it, but I would recommend that you use something like a V30 SanDisk Extreme, the one that I have is a 256 gig, and the reason for that is because this camera can shoot in formats up to 130 megabits a second, so just make sure that the card that you're getting is capable of that. I'll put a link to both the card and the camera in the description down below so that you know that this combo works well together. So how does it look? Well, honestly, it looks surprisingly good. I've actually been using this camera as a secondary, like a B-cam, and I've been using it to add some extra angles to some of my most recent videos that I've been working on. I also really like that I'm able to shoot in portrait mode at 3K resolution, which makes this perfect for shooting things like YouTube shorts. I think one of my favorite things about filming with this camera is genuinely just how easy it is. Like, this whole process is super simple from turning the camera on, turning the microphone on, and then that's literally it. You just point at you and you're ready to go. Everything is synced automatically. There's nothing that you have to worry about. You can shoot in auto and still get a pretty good image and it's just fantastic. I will say though that after reviewing some of the footage in this video, I don't want you to take some of the colors and criticize what this camera is capable of because it is winter here in Canada and everything is sort of gray and muddy looking and nothing looks vibrant or nice. So what this camera is seeing is really a representation of what I'm seeing. There is nothing green, there's no grass, the sky is terribly gray, and it's not the perfect condition to do a camera review in, but this is how it is here, and I kind of just have to suck it up. Okay, remember when I said that I got the Creator Combo though? There are actually two different versions of the DJI Pocket 3 that are available for sale. And there is actually one that I would push you to go ahead and purchase if you plan on buying this camera. Both cameras are the exact same. It really just comes down to the accessories that come with whichever option you pick. And when it comes to the regular Pocket 3, if you aren't buying the Creator Combo, you really don't get that much. You just get the Pocket 3 itself, this hard shell carrying case to protect the screen and the gimbal, a USB-C cable to charge it, a little lanyard, and a quarter inch thread adapter which 
does have a USB-C pass-through, so you're able to charge it while it's connected to a tripod. The value here is still really good, considering that this whole kit costs you about $500 and you're getting a pretty amazing pocket-sized camera. But for less than $200 extra, I really would recommend that you make the jump to the Pocket 3 Creator Combo because you're getting a whole lot more for your money. Not only do you get everything that's included with the regular Pocket 3, but you also get a wide angle lens adapter, which gives you a wider field of view for tighter shots, a quarter inch thread mini tripod so that you can stand the Pocket 3 up safely anywhere you go, and you get this nice weather sealed carrying bag to store everything in. Also, I forgot to mention this. This is the external battery pack that comes with the creator combo. All you do is plug it into the bottom of the DJI Pocket 3 and you get an extended battery life of an extra couple of hours. It also does have a quarter inch tripod and a USB-C out and you've already seen this in the video attached to the camera. But there's this wild card because included with the Pocket 3 creator combo is this, the DJI Mic 2. It comes with its very own windscreen and magnetic clip to wear it in a more comfortable position. The Mic 2 makes this entire kit worth it alone, and there isn't really a whole lot of information available about this thing as it's not actually available for purchase individually. But what I can tell you is that this has 32-bit float recording and internal recording. And it also just sounds pretty damn good. I'm actually really thankful that DJI did decide to include this mic inside of the Creator Combo because lavalier microphones are just becoming ever so popular when it comes to solo filmmakers. They're really easy to use. They sound pretty dang good. And honestly, wearing something like this looks a lot better than having a giant microphone sticking out the top of your camera where everyone's just gonna watch what you're doing. The DJI Mic 2 also does internal recording and it's really easy to use. All you have to do is press the button and when you wanna pull the footage from it, you just plug it into your computer with a USB-C port. I'm literally able to use this microphone that came inside of this kit to film all of my other videos that I make. And I think that's an incredible value, especially if you don't already own a mic. And now this is actually what the DJI Pocket 3 sounds like if you're just shooting without a microphone. So this is just directly into the camera. And honestly, I think that it's perfectly fine. There is a lot more background noise that is noticeable. It is pretty bad if you're kind of like around traffic or something. So I wouldn't really recommend using this in a noisy environment or in the city. However, you can plug in other microphones to this thing. And honestly, if you're looking to just save the money, you could wait to buy the mic too when it comes available for purchase, but you're wasting money at the end of the day because you will have to pay for that receiver that comes with the microphone. So you're kind of paying for extra things that you don't necessarily need. Now that we know what's included, I wanted to show you a couple of neat tricks that this camera can do that is perfect for solo content creators and even professional videographers. This camera also does have a face detect feature, which really does its best to keep you in the frame. And since this is a gimbal and it's motorized, it doesn't actually need to do this with any cropping, so you're getting the full output of the sensor. So in this case, I'm shooting in 4K 30 frames per second, and if it is following me, it's, it's not gonna crop, it's not gonna look ugly, it's not gonna look terrible. This is just what the camera is capable of shooting in. There is a caveat to it though, and that is that this face detect feature doesn't actually work in 4K 60 frames per second. So if you're planning on doing some slow-mo shots with this, I'm sorry to tell you, because it's just, it's not available. I will say there are times though where I try to demonstrate this or just use it for when I'm filming and I can't seem to get it to work sometimes. So in this case, I'm actually shooting in 4K at 30 frames per second, like it's able to. And when I walk around, the camera isn't following me. This is something that happens maybe one out of every five times I try to use this feature. And it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like this is a really big selling point to this camera. So it's just, it's kind of sad that this doesn't work all of the time. And in case you were worried about missing your shot and wanted to just get a larger view of the display, you actually can use the DJI MIMO app to see everything that this camera does and even control it via your phone. And when you do get it to work, this is what it does. It just follows you around, it tracks you as a subject. And funnily enough, I'm actually able to view this all happening on the DJI MIMO app. So. I can see right now that my legs aren't in the frame. And when I walk around, the camera follows me. If I back up over here, the camera is gonna bring me right back into the frame. So yes, you can see my super ugly shorts and it is winter in Canada and I am freezing. 
But honestly, this is just a really cool feature that this camera does. And it makes creating content so much easier as a solo filmmaker because you never really have to worry if you're in or out of the shot. If you like to do those walk in talk, you know, kind of pacing back and forth shots. So I've just thrown on that wide angle lens and I do have face track on. So this camera is gonna follow me no matter what I do. This is honestly perfect for any vlog situation because when you are vlogging, the last thing that you wanna have to worry about is whether you're in frame. You kind of just want it to be natural and focus on what's going on around you. And I think using this Pocket 3 has really kind of hit that nail in the coffin for me. Like this is probably the best vlogging camera that you can buy. This is what the 20 millimeter focal length looks like. I'm actually just using my phone here to kind of show you how much of a distance this is actually at. And I'm pretty comfortable right now. My arm isn't too far out. I am, you know, doing like kind of a tighter shot. And this is actually without the ultra wide lens on the camera. So I'm gonna show you how much of a difference it makes when I go ahead and plug that in. I've just attached it and I would never film at this angle because it's very unflattering, but you can see how much closer the actual camera is. And it's way easier to shoot like this if you're in kind of like a tight situation. And also, like I said, having that active track on the camera and not having to worry about whether you're in the frame or not makes this really comfortable to use as a daily vlog camera. This camera also only weighs 179 grams. And that's really nice because you never really have to worry about the fatigue. It also doesn't weigh that much either with the extra accessories that are plugged in, maybe 100 grams or so. And honestly, if you can hold your phone out for a lot of the day and record, this is basically gonna be exactly like that, except it's way more comfortable because the form factor just makes way more sense. I will be honest though, wide shots are something that I don't tend to do very often, and I'm very scared to take this thing with me wherever I go because I don't wanna lose it. Unfortunately though, losing it is a real concern that I have because it does attach to the camera magnetically. And when the camera is powered off, the lens adapter needs to be removed so that the lens can tuck away into its powered off state. Thankfully, DJI did think about this and included a space inside of the hard case for not only the wide angle lens adapter, but also the optional ND filter as well. I don't have the ND filter. It's not something that I've even been able to purchase yet, but it is something that I do recommend if you do tend to shoot outdoors on sunny days quite often. It's winter here in Canada and it's not something that I found myself really needing, but I will eventually pick it up when it's available on Amazon or something. Now, this camera can also do something that could be pretty confusing if you're new to filmmaking. So I'm gonna try my best to explain this in the best way possible while still giving you the information that you need to understand what is actually going on. The Pocket 3 has the ability to shoot in a format called log. In this case, it's D-Log the D being DJI. And if you've ever used a phone or a camera and have shot in the format called RAW, you know that when you bring your images into an editing software, you have way more flexibility of the colors and the detail. You know, you can re-expose your shot in case it was kind of blown out just a little bit. There is a lot more saving and work that can be done to the image. And overall, if you're a creator and have a very specific look that you wanna capture, you can use log to color grade your image and get the most that you possibly can out of it. I'm not a colorist by any means. I'm still really new to shooting in log formats, but this is a really big deal, especially if you plan to keep this little guy for quite a long time. Whether you're a beginner and this feature is something that you're gonna grow into or an expert and can take full advantage of it right away, this is really nice to have. It just really allows you to get your own consistent look and keep it across all of your footage. And this makes it way easier to color match this camera to other devices that you may be using to shoot your videos. I should also mention that this camera shoots 10-bit colors, which is kind of crazy for the price point that it's hitting. 10-bit is something that is wanted by a ton of filmmakers and YouTubers because it allows you, like I said, to have more flexibility in the colors in the image. You don't get any weird banding or any weird gradients that happen. It's just a nice smooth transition from one color to the next. And this is way more important when you're doing color work because that image retains so much flexibility in the colors that it's able to transition nicely from one to the other, making you able to kind of push it as hard as you want to get any sort of look that you desire. 10-bit is seriously almost unheard of in cameras at this price point. I've actually spent almost 3,000 Canadian dollars on my camera's body 
just to be able to have the luxury of shooting in 10-bit with a bunch of other formats like Log. So DJI is really out here doing God's work. Overall, the build quality of the Pocket 3 really does feel like it can stand the test of time. For the most part, it's made out of this really durable plastic and it does have these kind of like harder rubberish feeling accents. So I'm not really worried about this camera long term. And if it does get scratches on this plastic body, it's not entirely a big deal because it is still gonna function. I'm not really worried about where I can take this camera with me and what's gonna happen to it. And for a camera that's intended to quite literally be in your pocket, this is definitely a good thing. Note though that this Pocket 3 is not waterproof and I actually can't even find any material online to tell me whether or not this thing is water resistant. That being said, I have used it in the rain Thinking about it now, it was probably a stupid decision, but the camera itself is perfectly fine and nothing did happen. It just, I don't really recommend doing that because I feel like this gimbal, since it's motorized, is kind of a point of ingress for any water and damage. And when it comes to the battery, which is something that is really important, I have pretty good news. The battery is rated to last around 160 minutes in optimal condition. And I have found that to be pretty accurate because when I do shoot on this camera, I find myself able to pull about two to two and a half hours of 4K footage in 30 frames per second, which is crazy good. But if that wasn't enough for you, the camera actually does do fast charging with a 65 watt charger. So you're able to get 80% battery out of just 16 minutes on a charge. And I think it's like 35 minutes for a full 100%. You're literally gonna be able to plug this thing in and get it up and running within half an hour again with a full charge to go right back out and film. That's crazy. And if you were paying attention earlier, the creator combo actually does come with this. It's the portable battery bank, charger, extender, whatever you want to call it. This is basically just a USB-C power adapter that gets snapped onto the bottom of the DJI Pocket and it does extend the battery life pretty reasonably well. You can tell I've actually had a blast using this DJI Pocket 3 and this is something that I personally paid for and bought as an investment for the channel to make content on the go a lot easier. This is a camera that I've seen a bunch of people make videos about that are sponsored and believe it or not I was extremely skeptical to buy it myself because I figured all of these videos are just kind of sugarcoating everything. I didn't think that this would be that good of a purchase but I've been using it for the last couple of weeks, like I said earlier, and I've been really impressed. I haven't really been able to find a real flaw that's kind of made this thing a dead paperweight for me. I, I've loved just picking it up and taking it with me and shooting what I can on it because it is pretty damn good. Anyways, that's it. Let me know what you think about the Pocket 3. If you enjoyed this video, since I don't really do any sort of camera reviews and this is kind of out of my comfort zone, I would like to make a long-term video about this because I really do feel like this is something that I'm gonna be incorporating into my workflow pretty reasonably. I have already used it in the video that I made last week and it's something that I've just been having a really fun time picking up and shooting with. It's just really easy and accessible and I love it. Anyways, leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.